Hello collectors, it's Steven here and I'm bringing you my first double review. I'm going to kick this off with both of the Marmot Monster Heaven Godzilla 2000 sculpts. One from the movie of the same name on your left and the other from Godzilla vs. Megaguirus on your right. These two particular releases are from the Vinyl Wars series of figures brought over to the US thanks to Diamond and their previews outlet. While both of these figures have been made in various color schemes, I've chosen these two as they were the easiest for me to obtain and their personal favorites. So let's go over them and see whether or not they're worth adding into your collection. First off, Godzilla 1999, or as it's known as in the fandom, G2K. This particular figure is extremely popular with collectors as it's widely available and has many different color schemes, including two that I know of released in the Vinyl Wars reissue line. Now, even though it's popular, there may be some slight flaws if you examine it up close. First, the menacing face and gold eyes. On this figure, the teeth are only partially painted, which might bother some collectors, but it isn't noticeable or as much of an issue from a distance. Now, one paint issue which is rather noticeable from far away is the paint for the claws. I find it on mine to either have little dabs of it on the fingers, as shown here, sprayed on the fingers where it shouldn't be, or scuffed right out of the bag, which you can see all of the issues on this hand, and the trend does continue throughout the figure for the gold paint. The chest here where you can clearly see the fantastic green and purple spray the figure has, with a close look at the nice sculpt with a rather muscular throat, and you can see the sternum bulging out here. Here's a look at the side where you can see the spray looks a bit better here. Now the dorsal plates. Sexy. The red and gold blend very well here, and they fade into black, which appears to be the color the figure was casted in. However, the tips can look a bit sloppy on some of them, and perhaps this sloppiness may not be intentional as it looks like there may be a little bit of paint rub. A look at the tail where the dorsal plate paint just stops. Hmm. And you can see the spray combination with the black vinyl. It looks very, very nice. Finally, a look at the feet and legs which carries the same nice sculpt and paint blending. A note about the claws which I mentioned before, taking a look at the underside of the foot, the gold paint ain't too pretty. It's the underside, and some will find it pointless to point this out because it's a foot and you'll probably never see it, but it's just to reinforce the idea maybe the gold paint could have been applied a bit neater. Now, this figure does have some points of articulation. However, the issue with this is that it's not necessarily so much a feature as it is a result of the process of putting the figure together because each part was individually casted and then assembled. However, the points of articulation it does have shoulder swivels, as you can see here, swivels at the thigh, and a slight swivel at the tail, though there's not much to talk about. Now, as you may have heard, you don't necessarily want to force this figure around and move it too much because, well, you'll be scratching up against the body and you may damage the paint or ruin the sculpt. Overall, this was a great start for me in the stylized territory. Next, we have the Godzilla from Vs. Megaguirus in a fierce battle pose. While this figure is also great, I tend not to find much discussion about it in different forums and in different groups. Those who have it love it, and I can absolutely see why. Of note, I find this one to have softer but more details in the sculpt than the other Godzilla. A look at the head in its roaring pose. The gold eyes are nice, but just like the other Godzilla, the paint for the teeth is a bit lacking. The claws, which again feature some paint myths similar to the other Godzilla. A look at the torso, where you'll begin to notice right away the skin is painted purple to complement the black vinyl it's casted in. The detailing is great here, featuring the same characteristics as the other one. The side of Godzilla, some great detailing. The dorsal plates, which look amazing with the transition from purple to silver. Now, these plates are free from pretty much any issue, aside from maybe too thick of a paint application in some spots. The other Godzilla had some iffy plates, but they're not on this one, at least for me. A look at the tail, where again the paint on the dorsal plate stops part way down. The tail here also really exposes the black vinyl, which makes for a nice blending effect. And finally, the legs and feet, which are pretty nice. An issue with mine is that the feet don't sit flat with the ground because one foot on mine is angled. I rationalize this with him turning and he's just lifting his foot, but there are others that I've seen where this issue isn't there. 
this Godzilla features identical points of articulation from the other one, and again, you want to be careful moving this around because you're going to scratch it up against the body, and you may cause some unintentional damage. So, we have shoulder swivels. You get a lot more movement here than you do the other one. Complete rotation, because here, you can feel it even grinding up against the figure. Hips, a little bit of a swivel. And again, the tail. Slight swivel there. This Godzilla, in this particular paint scheme, remember there are many, is a bit simplistic with the paint details compared to the other one, but it still looks great. For a size comparison, those who are familiar with stylized figures will know they are rather large, but for those who aren't, here's a shot of these two next to some 6-inch Bandai vinyls, some SH Monster Arts, other Marmot figures, and some larger stylized figures. As you can see, these are quite the shelf hogs. So, buy them now, skip them, buy one but not the other, or hunt down a deal. Now, normally these two go for a decent price in the aftermarket, since they're kind of old and people really want them. However, thanks to the Vinyl Wars releases, collectors have a chance to get them at reasonable prices, but they won't last for long. At the time of this review, Godzilla 1999 G2K, whatever you would prefer, can be found easily for about $65 shipped, while the Versus Megaguirus release, if you look, can be found for about $50 before shipping, though it is climbing rather fast. Fans of the character will love these two, but they may not be appealing to everyone, and I totally understand that. These are great pieces if you can get them for a reasonable price, and remember, if these two paint schemes don't appeal to you, there are plenty of others to hunt down, which may have the same, or even better, quality to them. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and be sure to give it a thumbs up, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't. If you'd like to view some of my other videos, go ahead and click on the pictures in this video, and you'll be taken right to them. I've hand-selected them just for you. Be sure to check the description for both more information and some links to help me out, including a link to my Patreon. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.